Thanks for joining me, Nick. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for having me. Um, so both Nick and I came in from two different places. I came all the way from New York. Actually, I came from Palm Beach, and you came from where? Orange County, California. Okay, so thank you for doing this. Did DOC. you come just to see me? Of course. Amazing. Well, you I call, came. I come. Oh, and I just came to see you. So we had to meet halfway, sort of. I couldn't go all the way there. I, I know too many people there. I needed to it's very true. get away for a second. So have we actually met in person before? I was trying to remember. Um, I do not think so. You were kind of like the... Uh, the legend, urban legend, in, was I? yeah, back in the day when I first started becoming popular with mm -hmm. the, you know, started doing appearances at Tau Group and doing all this stuff, and everyone's like, you know, if, you, if Rachel doesn't know you, you're not really anyone. Ah, I love hearing that. Wait, so I don't, I don't think that when you were coming to Tau, I was still there. I think I had moved. You just left. I had just left, and I was working for them in New York, and then yes. opening up their Hampton spots and. Um, doing all that stuff and starting Stanton Social down there and yep. stuff like that. Um, okay, so we missed each other in Vegas. Yes. Um, but I had heard a little bit about this, you know, this thing on the internet, the dirty.com. I didn't really pay attention to it because my life was so, it was really about protecting people and yeah. being the wingman. And like, I really didn't pay attention to any of that. And my job was like my life. I loved my job. So I will just tell this story that the first time the dirty.com like stood out in my head and I really knew who you were was after the scandal that I was in okay. probably not even 24 hours later I had my one friend left like everyone disappeared right it was the day after Thanksgiving and my friend Tim says to me Rachel I really need to tell you something and he had been on my bed scrolling through shit you know he's like uh there's good news and there's bad news. I'm like, what? Meanwhile, I'm panicking. All the TVs in my house are on. My phone's ringing off the yeah. hook with people I don't know. A friends and family are like, what's wrong with you? Like, my mother's like, change your name. I look outside and there's like 50 paparazzi. He's like, so the good news is you're a household name. You're famous now. The bad news is you're on the dirty.com. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, but that's kind of like a claim to fame, you know? Well, when I was in the situation I was in. No, well. Sleeping with Tiger Woods is, you know, I, I don't think it's as bad as, I guess in that time period, you were probably panicking, but like, now nah, you look back on it, it's kind of like a trophy. Well, I don't know that I would put it like that. I mean, it really ruined my life. I mean, what no, happened- I agree with you in that respect, but also the same respect, like the opportunities really, you know, have, the doors have opened. Well, let's hold on for a second. Back then, let's see, that was 14 years ago now. This is 2009. It's not like it is now that you could sleep with somebody famous and then get a TV show. Okay, yes. Yeah, right. And also, I came from the space where I was not looking to do that to get famous. I Correct. was trying actually, to hide it. Yeah, I you were in love. I was trying to protect him. You were in love. Well, I won't say that. But what? yeah, I mean, I thought that I was with somebody that I cared about and that Rachel, cared about me. You were in love. All right, whatever. I may, may or may not. You have can say it. I was in love with you, Tiger. <laughs> stuff so all right let's just so the thing is is that it was really horrifying to me to have the entire world start talking to about me in that way yeah and then to see quotes from people that i barely knew be like oh yeah i know rachel you could tell because they walk through the nightclub if i had turned them away they're like that girl's such a bitch or whatever and then to see the words that were used especially on the dirty.com mistress, homewrecker, weapon of mass destruction, you know, all these crazy things that to me I did not represent. And it was so hurtful. And yes. I knew my life would never be the same. And I think that was, that's one of the things. And, that, you know, I've been removed from it for six years, seven years now from the dirty. And at that time, you know, cause you know me, it's those comments and those things that happen, they hurt people that hurt me too. It wasn't something I was ever proud of. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I condoned. And I tried my best to control people. But you have to also understand there wasn't Instagram. There right. wasn't like Facebook was just becoming a thing. MySpace was still a thing. Mm -hmm. And people are starting to become keyboard warriors. Like yeah. that was the start of it. The Dirty created, I don't want to say it was a social network, but it was the first time where trolls could really have a home. Yeah, right. right. And you can't, you can't really control what people think. And the crazy part about this site that I created is that it was kind of like a cultural phenomenon because people actually could submit their neighbor for the first time. It right. wasn't, it wasn't TMZ where, where famous people, you know, you're a public figure and it just comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting caught cheating or you're, you know, 
stealing something or whatever happens and someone can call you out, that's what I thought I was providing. Right. That third party platform where there was some sort of, you know, discourse. Yeah. Was it negative negative? Um, in my personal opinion, I would say seventy eight percent yes. Uh, was there positives from it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I think we broke some pretty big scandals and big stories. Um, and it, it did give an outlet to the other side, not just, you know, the athletes, but the girls that were being used or pawns in the situation to give them a voice. Right. Um, and yeah, we exposed like, you know, there was obviously a lot more with the Tiger Woods stuff. There was a lot more women involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had fun when he was in Vegas. He sure did. Um not with me, but yeah, with other people. Um, so let's get back to how you actually started the dirty. Okay. How did you, how did it come to you? Um, honestly, at that time, reality TV was just starting. Mm -hmm. It was starting to get big. And I was like, okay, well, you know, Survivor and these shows are starting to happen. The housewives are starting to happen. OC, I was from, I'm from Orange County. So I saw the real housewives and I was just like, wow, I'm like, these are all my neighbors. I'm like literally I lived in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, reality TV is so big. Why has no one done reality internet? Right. So my thought process was, okay, well, there's all these little Paris Hilton types in their towns, Scottsdale being the predominant one. Why don't I showcase these people and make them famous? So it wasn't, it didn't start with you trying to break stories no, about celebrities. Never. It was local hot girls or whatever. What started happening was, and that's what it was. It was literally like whoever the local girl was, you know, I was kind of mean, but I would make fun of them, right? And give them a character name and they would have nicknames. And I would, girls would start submitting themselves to me and say, hey, you know, what what procedure should I get done? Oh, so wow. it's, it started to become like, like, you know, I was younger and they're like, Nick, would you? We called it, would I sleep with that person? Oh right? my God. So it, it, was, it was in that vein. And then the club scene started getting really big. Mm -hmm. And when you were in high school, the cool kids that really, you know, or you're in college or whatever, that don't really make it into that like scene, they start getting into the club scene. They become yeah. club promoters and then they work their way up the ladder, the bartenders, whatever. And, and it's so incestual. They're all sleeping with everyone. Yeah. So it's it was so easy for them to hide behind the computer screen and submit a hot girl mm -hmm. or what we call bottle rats, which are the girls getting the free drinks, right? Um, and submit the 30K millionaires, the guys living off overdraft protection, trying to make sure that, that their card goes through on Grey Goose. You never know, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was so easy and it was becoming the first meme. It was the first start of that culture, that phenomenon, like, oh my God, can we actually talk about people? Can we actually make fun of people? So it's so interesting because, so you took a small, it wasn't a small town, but you took a town and you, start, you started with that and yeah. you were getting into who was popular there or making someone popular. Did it also occur to you to maybe, you know, make it available for people who, if they wanted to expose a bad date and be like, this guy sucks. It, it was, yeah, it was across the board, yeah. you know, and, and the biggest story, and at that time, the biggest stories we got that would help us go viral were the sports, the athletes, because okay. the athletes weren't technically celebrities in that 2009, I would say 2008 to 2000. 12 right like tmz was still just covering celebrities uh -huh. right they weren't touching s athletes and for some reason they got a pass then it it started becoming a thing because spring training was in scottsdale i started in scottsdale a lot of baseball players were you know really minor minor league players yeah. but they were going to the clubs saying that they played for the dodgers right? right so or the angels or whatever it was so it was easy to have these guys as marks to call them out and the girls would call them out too like you know hey i slept with this player no you this guy's really making like five grand a year like oh my god relax right <laughs> um but you had matt leinert there and matt leinert was our big story because he was partying with nick lachey and he was always you know hooking up with acu girls and he had some party back at his house with a beer bong it got on sports center and then the dirty just went boom it went crazy then we started getting the kobe bryant affairs we started getting all these different affairs and that's how it all kind of trickled in and tiger was just not very smart about who his alliances were with mm. and you can't have someone like me because at that time i was getting paid 20 to 25 grand to show up in vegas to do appearances because the site was so big right 
And these are all the same circle of friends, right? Right. And they're telling me this stuff about Tiger and all this, you know. Did you believe it? No. There's no chance. Like, you look at Tiger Woods, I go, first, A, no one's going to bang that guy. <laughs> and then then you're like, you know, there's he's, he's married, his wife's hot, like everything, you know, on paper, you just couldn't believe it. Right. You know, but then... I didn't believe the Kobe stuff either. And that was wild. Right. So you just, you just never really know. Um, people are all different behind closed doors. Absolutely. And so what was your criteria you would use for, you know, uh, sources or for making sure that you wouldn't publish something unless you had like all, all the right, the facts basically. Uh, it was tough. It was really tough. Cause honestly, I would say 25% of the stuff that I got I, I posted because it, I was just inundated with a lot of like revenge porn, yeah. a lot of, uh, of, you know, just vulgar stuff. A lot of it came from Canada, to be honest. Mm. Um, and I just, I never went with that because I had advertisers, you right. know, and, and at that time, it, it's crazy to say this, but like even Google ads wasn't even invented yet. So I had to do the direct, you know, door to door salesman and say, Hey, you know, we want, this club or, or whatever to advertise. So I would still be kind of picky, but at the same time, um, I would talk like s some of the girls that came to me, like Stormy Daniels, mm -hmm. she came, she, she gave this crazy story that she slept with Trump yeah. in Lake Tahoe. And, and how am I supposed to come on? Like, right. Brett, she's like, tell me Ben Roethlisberger walked me to his room. Uh -huh. And I'm like, how am I supposed to believe this? You know? And, the craziest part is a lot of the times when I would get stuff, I would ask for comment and I would get a legal letter or C and D or, yeah. you know, Marty Singer would call me. Right. Yeah. So then if that happens, it's usually means it's legit. Yeah. And I learned this just from, you know, lawyers approaching me thinking that I had stuff, yeah. but I never even had stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're just threatening me with lawsuits like, like girls or athletes would, know that they made a mistake or cheated or whatever mm -hmm. and they would just assume or get so crazy in their head that i would have a videotape or i would have a picture or whatever and then they would get the lawyer to call me mm -hmm. and say hey we're making a statement this is not real he doesn't have this and i would never deny like hey i don't have anything yeah we just listen and just take it in then they would give me the information and then i would say okay well hey this is out there does anyone have it and it would come to me yeah you know which is crazy but the fact checking part it wasn't as intense back then because I was protected, well, at least I wasn't really, I wouldn't say protected, but there was no law against what I was doing. But were you considered a journalist then? And you had, you were protected by? Not not, not through journalistic standards, no. Okay. I was protected through this thing called the CDA. Okay. Um, the Communications Decency Act, which basically said that no website owner is liable for any third party Got content. It. So. And then that's... So even if you exposed somebody's affair and you were affecting their career, which a lot of people, that's why you're getting letters from Marty Singer or whatever, yeah. um, they they wouldn't go after you and say, you don't have the facts, you shouldn't have put this out. I mean, did you ever get nervous sometimes? Or be like, I, you know, I shouldn't have posted this because I don't really know if it's true. No. At that time, I didn't care. I was too young. I just, oh, okay. I, 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 you know, so you didn't care. Full, full transparency. No, yeah. at that time, like I was like getting off on the fame and getting right. off on the, the clicks. And you have to understand, like I was doing 10 million people a day. Wow. Like it was, there was nothing like it. There was, there wasn't even apps like there was, that wasn't even a thing. So, and this is direct organic traffic, yeah. which doesn't even exist anymore. And that just goes to show you how much people feed the public feeds. On, gossip. Yeah. Gossip, seeing people fail, um, seeing people that are really high up take that big plunge. And I will say like in today's day and age, it really does bother me because they don't, doing what I did was not easy. Mm -hmm. And having the balls to do what I did was not easy. I got sued, you know, 50 times, I'm 50, I went, I went 50 and 0, but it cost a lot of money to get that site to keep going. Yeah. And the reality was, is I did have a, a loophole, but the law wasn't set in stone. There mm -hmm. wasn't precedent. precedent. Right. So I had to do that. I had to go to the highest levels of courts. I had to do two jury trials. I had to do like all this stuff with random, you know, people that I don't even know in like Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Right. And sit there and fight and fight and fight for free speech in my head, free speech. Yeah. Right. Um, but now you look at it now, it's like everything's fair game. Yeah. You know, social media has made everything fair game. Uh, Des Moines, like all this stuff. It's like 
blind items. You could say whatever you want. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be real or, or true or whatever. Yeah. People just believe anything. Do you think the site would still be doing well or you think it would be shut down no. for cancel culture? No, I, I, I got out right before I felt like the Me Too and a lot of this stuff was was happening Yeah. because as as fun as it was, was it right? In my personal opinion, no. Mm. Um, for me to tell a girl that, you know, you're three procedures away from greatness, like that's, that's not, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, you know, and I have a daughter. So now, yeah, now you it, see. Having I there was a lot of things that happened in my life. Having a daughter was kind of a shot. Mm -hmm. Having uh, MS, mm -hmm. as you know, was kind of a shot. Like there was a lot of things that were, were were adding up to where I was like, okay, I said I was gonna do this till I was forty, and uh, I couldn't even get to forty. I think I stopped at thirty eight, but uh, I was just in that place where I was maturing as an adult, and I'm looking back on things. And as funny as it was. It was a different time and culture where you could have the locker room talk yeah. and it was acceptable and it was funny and you could act like Trump and yeah. get and get away with and it. get away with it. Yeah. And now you can't like so. No, the, the answer is anyone that's tried tried to replicate this thing has gone to jail or mm -hmm. has got fined or got sued and it's not possible. Yeah. I mean, just as someone who went through it and was someone that you talked about on the site, um, you know, I can speak for women that go through that. So this was 14 years ago. It still affects me in a way that there's a stigma that goes with being with the other woman that you can't get away from. But then when the media or people in the media use these like trigger words or whatever um, that trigger other people to like join in because they're feeling angry about what's going on in their life or whatever it is that makes people want to jump in this herd mentality of yeah. like shaming someone um, to publicly shame them. Like I've noticed for me that it has never really dissipated. I mean, it's dissipated in the way that you have like a cheering squad of people. But, you know, when people meet me, they know my name before they I've even opened my mouth, right? They they associate it with something. You see the women clutching their husbands a little tighter. You you know, you hear like when I was applying to private school for my daughter, I heard comments that, oh, you know, we have some moms that don't want you here. And it's like, dude, when are people gonna get over this? But I I really do blame how the media represented me. Um, and I know there was no other option, right? Because as the other woman, you that's how you talk about them still to this day, right? But as yeah, someone but who went through it, it, it was difficult to overcome and has been. As someone from my side, mm -hmm. let me tell you what my side was like. When all that went down, right? It, and I know there's a stigma, right? Mm -hmm. But you weren't the other woman. I know, I know people say the other woman. Right. But you weren't the other woman. You were the number one woman. And whether you like to admit that or not, I think you know deep down inside who was number one and who was number two. And I think this thing blew up to the world because of that situation. Yeah. So from my side, I saw it completely different, you know, and I think Tiger probably knows how he sees it because it it wouldn't have dissolved. It wouldn't the whole thing wouldn't have dissolved if you weren't number one. Right. And then unfolded the way it did sort of. And I will say um, no one else has kind of remained, you know, the name that's associated with it. It's it's never left my, you know, it's like Rachel, you could tell comma Tiger's mistress to this day, no matter what I'm yeah, and when, when you when you see that, does that bother you? Well, it, I mean, it bothers me because I don't have like agency for my own. You know, I was someone before that happened. Yeah. I was a big deal before that. I was like the first lady of Vegas, right? Yeah. I mean, I had a great job. I I was respected in a man's world. You know, anyone in Vegas was like a stripper or a waitress. And I had a man's job and like commanded that nightclub that I, I ran. I commanded the city. You know, doors would open for me. The most famous people would ask for me and would only want me by their side. Yeah. And then after that situation, it was like, oh, I don't want to be associated with her. So that was really difficult for me to know that everything that I had worked for become and become was like no longer. And how was I going to get that back? And to this day, it's, it has been excruciatingly hard. I mean, if I wanted to be a school teacher, I couldn't. If I wanted to go back into media, because before yeah. that I worked for Bloomberg News, I couldn't because it was too much. I was I came with scandal, kind of, you know, and that's 
inside, I mean, people that know me, that's so not who I am. Like yeah. I'm monogamous. Mm -hmm. I love the people that I'm with. I'm, you know, I'm a good friend and loyal, but like, that's not how I was portrayed. And that's like not the media's job to do that either. Right. So hence, hence the show. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Hence the show misunderstood. But yeah. I think, um, you know, I appreciate that after all these years, you know, we're able to laugh it off and it's, it's no, I think, I think you stamped your, in history, whether you like it or not, like it will be one of the biggest stories mm -hmm. in the world. Like yeah. no matter what, yeah. He, and he's the greatest golfer in the world, probably yeah. one of the greatest athletes in the world. Agreed. So for him to have a scandal like that, and uh, you know that asterisk on his record, it's just never going to go away, and it doesn't yeah. go away for anyone, not right. just you, just the world. Like anyone that knows him is going to know you, and you're just connected. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I know deep down there's love still on both sides. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on from that. All right. So you, <laughs> so you sold the dirty or you just closed it? Uh, sold. Okay. Sold. Yeah. And what did you do after that? Um, I took a little time off. Um, then I started consulting for a lot of the bigger brands. Um, uh, the Us Weeklies, more of the, the yeah. tabloid stuff. Oh, wait. And, and I just have a question. Before you sold, what, were you at the point where you're like, I can't do this anymore, I'm feeling guilty? Or you still were like riding the high of like, I'm making so much money, I'm so famous, but I just want out? No, it, it, it's, it's honestly like I compare it to an athlete retiring. You, you sit there and you think nobody likes you anymore and you think that no one's your friend anymore mm. and you're golfing and you suck at golf. <laughs> And you're just sitting there and you're like planning your next vacation. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, let me go to Bora Bora. Let me do all these things. Let me settle down with my family. Let me hang out with my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. You know, let me do all these things that you're supposed to do as a normal person. And then you realize that you're not really a normal person. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was really, really hard. Because you have to understand, I was posting thousands, thousands of posts a week. And I was in, you know... 300, 400,000 people's in the middle of people's lives. Yeah. And some of these people had, I'm assuming, become friends at this point, and you would have to do decide whether or not you're going to do stories on them. I mean, you must have known a lot of people at that point. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Well, not, I wouldn't say there was protection in place for yeah. some people, yes. Yeah. Um, but I tried my hardest not to. Yeah. I tried to have no friends because doing that, you can't have many yeah. friends. Obviously, the bigger, the higher up people, you know, I would try to help and at least tell them like, dude, what are you doing? But, you know, guys so, are guys. So like, would you give a heads up to people and be like, listen, there's gossip about, uh, I'm hearing that you're sleeping with all these women and if you don't quit it, I'm going to have to post it. Like, would you give them a heads up? No, usually I post it first. Really? Yeah. And have okay. them blow up my phone. Everybody. That was the funnest part was like when I would get something and my phone would blow up. It's the best oh my God. because there's, you just hear just the pain in their voice, like begging, like, please, please take this down. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it starts with begging and then I'm assuming it becomes anger. Um, no, never, not on, no, really? it's tears. It's just tears. Really? Yeah. Cause you have to understand, like I had so much power. Yeah. It was crazy, especially in Vegas, Vegas. Oh man. I was getting, I could get stuff closed down in two seconds. It oh, was, yeah. It was amazing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so now go back to what you were saying. So you started to consult. So, yeah, and then, you know, it just, it got, it put it, and then COVID, like, everything was just a strain on my marriage. I just didn't know I was so lost. I didn't know what to do. Um, was this your first marriage or your second at this point? Second, okay. but the first one was kind of short-lived. Mm -hmm. um, this one was... I met Shane Lamas, uh, Lorenzo Lamas' daughter in Vegas, and I married her once. I, I was doing an appearance at Tao Beach, got baptized in the pool, went on a double date with Jason Strauss. Strauss said that she's hot, you should marry her, it's a joke. And I married her. No way. Eight hours later. Who was, uh, ironically, who was Jason on the date with? <laughs> Jason was on a date with another girl who knew Shane, but I didn't, the girl Jason was on a date with was forgettable, I don't, Right. I don't okay. remember who it was. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty much his fault. <laughs> okay. A lot of things are his fault. Do you know that Jason's my very first kiss when I was 12? I could see that. <laughs> we dated on and off for 25 years. Really? Yeah. 
I dated him when I was in Vegas. I dated him in college. I so Jason Strauss is Eskimo Brothers with Tiger Woods. This is the best. Six degrees of separation for wow. sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to kill him. I mean, he was my first love. I Did c- you not know that? Well, uh, I, did, I, I knew of it, mm-hmm. but, you know. Yeah. But so, you know, when you have that young love with someone that you can't, like, get let go of, sort of. So I would say, like, he's the one that if somebody said, like, who's your heart? It would be Jason. Really? Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah, but Jason's never gonna get married. No, he's not. He's having a nice time. So you need to let go. I've let go. I'm just saying, I have a special place in my heart for him. No, he's one of my really good friends. Yeah. One of my best friends. Like, he's a good guy. I talk to him a lot. Yeah, no, he is a good guy. Um, And he's very smart and very successful and and taught me so much about business. I mean, taught me everything. He's really a genius. He's a little aggressive on the peptides, though. He needs to. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sure he's listening. Um, so, okay, so did you actually want to meet her? Or you did it to be funny. I mean, want to marry her? Or you? Yeah, at that at that point, I was I was at my probably my lowest. I, you know, I brought I don't know. There was I, I think I brought like ten or fifteen girls with me to Vegas. Oh boy! And I had to like hide them, and yeah, I was a mess. I was drunk and belligerent. And I was just you know. I saw her and I was just like, hey, next blonde I see. Right. I'm going to marry her. Wow. But it lasted 11 years or something. 11 years, two kids. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so there was no regrets there. Um, I think now it's really tough, you know, and, and you look back at it and you just, you're always like questioning, like what was the intention, mm-hmm. you know, on her part? Like mm-hmm. who's crazy enough to marry me after that, you know? But then you grow. It was weird because it did work because – we grew, we had, we were married, so we kind of had to do it backwards. Mm-hmm. So we would go on a lot of dates, but we were married. So usually you don't go on dates when you're married, right? Yeah. So it's just, it was kind of like we grew into each other. Um, and then when she got pregnant with my daughter Press, I called her Press because of you know all the media attention. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just once I had my kids, I was like, wow, this is um, the most amazing life. Is so amazing. When I had her, I was like. With I took her to Disneyland almost like every day. Oh wow! Yeah, I was like super dad. Like, I just it was so fun. I would take her everywhere, mm. you know. But then you go through something traumatic like divorce, and now it's you know, you feel you feel for the kids. Yeah, you know. So that's the regret. It's like oh man, like did I bring kids into this world to give them pain? And that's you know, it's never your intention. Right. All right. So yeah, kids totally change your life. When I had my daughter. Um, I, first of all, I didn't even think I wanted kids. I'm like a dog person. Uh-huh. And I had her, uh, I was recruited to do the amazing race and they give you all these shots and they, um, give you a pregnancy test. Uh-huh. And they called me like 15 days before we were supposed to start. And they said, good news and bad news. The bad news is you can't do the show, but the good news, I guess, is you're pregnant. And I was like, What? So I was shocked, and I actually learned on September 11th that I was having the baby. So I remember crying, taking like peeing on 20 um, pregnancy tests. It's really funny. When it says not pregnant, you just toss it, and you're like, I believe it. But when it says you're pregnant, you like go through the entire, you spend like 200 bucks. You know, crazy is on 9-11. That's that's a sign. So it was a sign because I was just dating the guy at the time. I just started dating him. Um, you know, and he was nice enough, but he was also 10 years younger than me. And I had a conversation with my best friend that evening. He was still at work. And I said, what am I going to do? She said, Rachel, this is the 10 year anniversary of September 11th. This is like meant to be that you are supposed to turn a leaf and know that today is the day that you don't have to feel sad about things, but it's about your future and look forward. So at that moment I was like, I'm having the baby and I'm going to tell him tonight. So I never looked back, but had I not, had it not been some special moment like that, I might have been like this, all the signs point to this not being the right time, you know, but it's never the right time, I don't think, you know, so, but she changed my life. I love her more than anything. She teaches me about unconditional love all the time. Like I didn't really grow up with, you know, parents that were so in my life. And um, so they're the best. My daughter's now 11. How old are your kids? 11. 11. Yeah. Such a great age. Yeah. I just took her to Taylor Swift. Have you gone? No, but she said so you much pressure. You have to go. The tickets, like it's a lot. It is a lot, but the the expense is so worth it for that memory. I, you know, she wanted me to film the whole stupid Did you do it at thing. MetLife? At, um, we went to um, Philadelphia two weeks before because we weren't in um, New York the weekend that she came to New York or New Jersey. So 
I spent the entire time videoing her reactions to everything. And we went just her and I. I would never go do something with my mother if I was 11 years old. I would think that was so lame. Yeah. We both dressed up. We both got all, you know, swiftied out. And I thought, and I hate concerts, by the way. I thought it was so much fun. And I was like in tears watching how excited she was. And by the way, what an amazing concert where everyone knows every song. Everyone's yeah, up the entire time. Everyone's singing. Yeah. It's like, you got to do it. So that's my push. And I don't even... I didn't even think I knew any Taylor songs besides like Bad Blood or something. I knew every song. And I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with her. She's, I love she's her. an amazing performer. She is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like she's Celine Dion or something. You know, it's not like she has the best voice ever, but she's just fantastic. She's a great song. She's hot writer. sometimes too. Like yeah. I, I look at her, I'm like, gosh, she's kind of hot. Yeah. She, well, she's so tall and blonde. And yeah. She's got that like modely yes. thing. Wafer. Yeah. But I, I, I'm trying to get over the blonde thing. Well, that was a question I was going to ask you later, but we can get into it. Like, have you gotten to the point yet where you're old enough to know that you should like look for different qualities besides no. like sexy and hot? No, but that's I wish. Safe. No, I wish. I, and I think that's the problem I'm having right now as a single man in this world is that I am uh, still looking at um, the wrong generation. Right. So what do you want? Girls in their 20s or something? I don't want them. That's what and that's just you're aching for. That's just what I see. <laughs> right. You know, it's kind of like you have your blinders. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I don't know, for me, I just, but it, but there's a huge, like, since I've started facts, so going back to after retirement, mm -hmm. whatever, and then it's been seven months, I started facts, F A C T Z dot com. Mm -hmm. And it's actually an app. Um, Cause I was like, wow, I'm like, there's an entire generation that has no idea who I am. Yeah. And it's so refreshing and it's so fun. And they're young and they're, Gen Z is like, I wouldn't say mean, but they just don't care. Right. So, and they don't, they don't know anything. Like, well, is it because they're ignorant and they don't get it? I no, mean, they just, they don't process the same as we do because of technology. Right. Like they're, they're just quick hitters. They want to know information right away mm -hmm. and they're out. Like they don't want to read. Well, they don't want you, they don't want you to tell them what to do. They want you to tell them what to do and then they want to take credit for it right. saying, you know, I didn't, it, that wasn't your idea. I just did this on my own, which is not true. They can't do anything themselves. I love them. I, I'm fascinated. It's honestly, I'm not even kidding, Rachel. It's like going to the zoo huh. and you're looking at these animals and they don't know how to coexist together. Yeah. They don't want to go on dates. They don't want to touch each other. They don't want to receive flowers. I learned that the hard way. Oh. They, they don't want to do anything. It's just crazy. And so, yeah, the, the point is, is that I need to start looking outside the box, maybe mm. into that, that 30 scale. How old are you now? 44. So, right. I mean, so you're not going to be attracted to someone who is maybe in their 30s, who maybe is a mom, single mom, who has like- Are you like trying a, to ask me out right no, now? No, I'm 48. I'm almost 50. So, I'm just <laughs> okay. Um, I thought you were younger. But I would if I was in my- 30s or late why? 20s why don't because, you go for young guys because no i hate young guys i did i married i oh and i didn't finish my story i ended up marrying that guy who uh, was the father of my child at the little white chapel isn't that the where same you, one yeah isn't did? that where you and shane yeah, got married yeah yeah um i was at someone else's wedding and they were like you're glowing dude you want to hear crazy stories taylor swift was walking out while we were walking in how random is that that you, Do you think her she up? got married and nobody knows no i she wasn't that like famous yet. Oh. But everyone's like, oh, that's Taylor Swift. I had no idea who she was. Interesting. Why yeah. do you think she was there? She was there, like one of her friends were getting married. Oh, She oh. was just randomly in I, Vegas. I will say it was a really fun thing. I mean, as I walked out, it was like, you know, they played That's What You Get for Waking Up in Vegas. I had 20 people there because we all left the other wedding and came to mine. It was so fun, you know. Um, but I then the, afterwards, had, you're like, oh, Jesus. I had all the club guys. I had, uh, you probably know, Brandon Rook. I had, mm -hmm. he was he was wearing a tuxedo t-shirt. Oh, God. Uh, Mike Myers was there. He did a speech. He was rolling his balls off. Oh, my God. So it was it was all the guys. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least you had everyone there. Yeah. No, they were they were in shock, but they were supportive. Did you go to Sapphire's or the Rhino after? No, because this was during, like, this was during the day. This was oh. like, <laughs> this, this wasn't like, because we tried to get married right from Tao. Yeah. But it was, you can't get your license passed like 2 a.m. Right. Yes, that's so right. So then we went back to the hotel. Uh, we stayed at the Venetian, made sweet love. And I'm like, and we woke up and she's like, do you still want to get married? And I was like, 
I'm down. Let's go. Amazing. And we did it like during the day. Like it was while like, you were somewhat sober. I know. I w- I think I was sober. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Um. What? So, what's your thoughts on? Do Gen Z women sleep with you on your first date? Maybe not you. With men? Uh. No. Okay. No. So there. I think. I think. Uh. The emotional. They're emotionally disconnected in a way that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. They don't take on risk. Like they're not like. I would say millennials are more deep divers. Like they're like, just go for it and deal with the repercussions afterwards. Okay. I think uh, Gen Z is a little bit more guarded, more of like in their thought process is is not geared towards, is this good for me? But it's more, is it geared, is it good for my overall brand? Huh. If that makes any sense. Yeah. And brand meaning, do any of them have jobs? Besides taking out their clothes in their bedroom and putting it on Instagram. Well, those are the the luck the ones that make real money. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But but that's what I'm saying. It's like they're in it for more of the location tag. Is this guy gonna take me to Komodo? You know, like like <laughs> that's their vibe. Oh my god. Yeah. But it, but it doesn't end in like what the guy that's actually paying the Komodo bill thinks. Right. You know. Right. Right. So it's we're so disproportionate now as in relationships that's why you see a lot of these dating apps are actually working Uh because you you find two people that actually really want to date right but now the guys and the girls the guys are just getting so lazy and they're so turned off by these women that they're not even chivalrous anymore they're not opening doors they're not sending flowers they're not they're not doing anything that they should be doing yeah as a respectable man Mm. to women right and i think a lot of that has to do well, no, a lot of it has to do with the way these kids were brought up. I'm not blaming parents, but like if you put technology in front of a kid, they're gonna, they want instant gratification. They don't want to hold hands and walk down the Champs Elysees and say, you know, let's go take a picture under the Eiffel Tower. Mm-hmm. They want to take the Uber to the Eiffel Tower, get the shot, put it on their Instagram, get right. back to the hotel and watch Netflix. Like they, they have a routine, right? Right. The way we grew up, it was completely different. There was this thing called love. Yeah. There's this thing called romance. There's this thing called writing someone a card or a love letter or, you know, doing the little things to show that you appreciate someone. Mm. Their generation's more of like expected. They expect it like this person got this or this person is in this location. This is where you need to take me. This is Mastro's a picture of my food. I've never seen anything like this. Like I've never seen so many pictures of food in my life. I know. And it's crazy to watch people on dates because they're both on their phone. Yep. They're both taking pictures. Like no one is ever present or having a conversation, it seems, which yep. is bizarre to me. But also what I was going to say about um, the dating apps, there's so many options. So I don't think people stick around very much. Like I had a, a woman on um, from Netflix. They have the show Jewish Matchmaking yeah. right now. And I had her on and she was talking about the tips and tricks she has for getting people married. She's married over 200 people. And she was saying, you know, you should not even touch them for the first five dates, not even a hug, not even putting your hand on their hand because you want to really know them and really see, you know, have this energy where by the fifth date, you're just like dying to be physical with them. And if you do it right off the bat, it like takes everything away. So she was giving me this advice and I'm like, wait a second. There's no way that a man would wait around for five dates anymore because he just has too many options. He can go home and screw somebody else and still go on the five dates, but it just doesn't make any sense. And the women will be nervous that they're gonna lose the guy, so they'll sleep with him anyway. So I just think it doesn't work that way. I think anymore. that's that's a New York mentality. You think so? Oh yeah, it's so hard to. It's so much harder than it used to be. Oh, you can't even meet someone, especially normal, in New York. Well, anywhere. Well, that's true. We're in a totally different world, and I don't know. I think the older I think the older we get, the harder it becomes. Yeah. Just because. You know. Well, for women, for sure. Well, I think. When you build a life with someone, mm-hmm. you, you don't want you don't want to do it all over again. Yeah, that's so, true. So, so like people in our position, mm-hmm. it's like, dude, we're gonna have to put a lot of work in, mm-hmm. a lot of sacrifice, a lot of you know time spent, and we're gonna have to build something with someone. Yeah. So they could try to be on our level. It's just not gonna happen. 
Yeah, and I'm more attracted to someone who like wants to be an us. Wants I, yes. I want a witness to my life. You yes. know, like I want someone who's my teammate, and I find that sexier than like a one night stand with someone that's hot. I, no, no I you're a always, package. I would always revert back to the person that's like, but this guy knows me, and I know him, and I'd rather have that and feel that comfort and that love than this person who might be hot and fun and sexy for like the now, yeah. but like. To me, that's that's not the whole package. Yeah, you want the unicorn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so let's get back to facts for a second. Okay. How did you come up with the idea? You, so you had not been in having like a media plat in the media platform no. type of thing. Okay. So so I think for me it was I I looked at what I did. Mm -hmm. I went back. I wrote a book about the dirty. I went and reread my book. This was back in two thousand thirteen. How did 14. the book do? Crushed because yeah. it was you know. People were just dirty fans. Yeah. So they just wanted to see how it started. And I wrote about it. And I wrote about all the girls I slept with, first and last names. Like I kept it really dirty. Wow. You know? So it was it was uh Did you get any blowback from that? No, because Fifty Shades of Grey started becoming a thing. Like oh. it was it was uh my honest truth and it was honestly for me, it was really good just to get it all out of my system. Okay. You know. Um, but it was it was open ended. I would probably never do it again because it was really hard. But mm -hmm. like, it was good um, to get all that emotion and all the the past out. It's really cathartic, right? Cathartic. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no. When I when I did the dirty, I was like, okay, well, these are the popular things. There was Perez Hilton. There mm -hmm. was TMZ. Um, Deadspin was a sports site that was starting to get legs. There was MySpace, social media. So I said, let's try to combine all these things and, and make a, a home, right? Mm -hmm. And I think taking the best of all these little things and putting it together, what, what I try to do was study what people like or mm -hmm. what was getting them brainwashed. So with facts, it was pretty much the same thing. I'm like, okay, well, no one's typing in dot coms anymore. Like that's done. Everyone's focused on Instagram, mm -hmm. TikTok, Snapchat, they want the YouTube vibe. So what I wanted to do was incorporate the old school blog style mm -hmm. with Instagram, with TikTok, and make it feel like, at least for Gen Z, that they're getting lost into a place with content. How often is it being refreshed and updated? Uh, I would say once every 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So so it's it's constantly being up fresh, uh, refreshed with content, but it's I, I try to stay on... The get ready with me. That's the hot thing right now with these girls. Guys are fascinated. They they had no idea. Girls. So like, what kind of story would you do about that? Uh, just the the video of the girl putting on her makeup and <laughs> talking about her life. <laughs> yeah. Guys had no idea, right. and they are freaking out. Why? Like, because you just think like you take a girl on a date, you don't know they sit there for two hours and then talk to themselves right. in the mirror and they're like putting all this layers of foundation. And they probably on. look like a totally different person. Totally so, different person. Yeah. They start like this and then they end like a filter, Yeah. right? It's crazy. It's amazing what makeup does. So yeah. those go viral. So I do the viral videos, then I do the breaking news. I do a lot of politics stuff because Gen Z has no idea about civics. Do you do it in a way that they can understand yeah. it? Yeah, I, okay. I dumb it down. Okay. <laughs> I dumb it down. So okay. so I do that and I do... But do you take a stance on politics or do no. you try and do straight we're, up facts? I try to do facts and I try to... I, we're purple. Uh, we we kind of have In the middle like, of blue and Yeah, red. so okay. so we try to go both sides um, and we really try to like... We have kind of like a code. We want integrity. We want people to live in honesty. We want people to have high morals. You know, we want them to really thrive and show us more positives than negatives. Okay. But we will showcase... You know, breaking news. And then I have a paparazzi team. So I have a team in New York. I have a team in, in L.A. Oh, wow. And they're all ex-TMZ guys, like from the old guild. You wow. Know? And I tell them, like, hey, this is what I want. You know, I want it to feel old school. Because these kids don't know it. To them, it's so refreshing. Yeah. They're just like, wow, I've never seen anything like this before. But for you and I, it's like... What right. do you mean? This is what we grew up on, right? But so, because I've asked you a couple of times, I was like, wait, I can't find it. Explain, it's on an app. Yeah. I so, feel like so a you, dinosaur saying this. So if like, you go to the app store yeah. on Android mm -hmm. or Apple, mm -hmm. you type in F-A-C-T-Z, mm -hmm. pops right up. Okay. You just download the app. But you can go to the dot .com. There is a dot .com. Okay. A mobile site, F-A-C-T-Z dot .com. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started a podcast. Right. And that's doing real well. 
That's and, Fox and, Pod. And what kind of guests are you, like, what's the theme of it? I think for me right now, I'm really focused on more of that millennial Gen Z influencer type. Okay. Um, I think that. Do they have a message or they're no, just No, I think, I think. The message is me asking them questions and trying to figure out who the hell they are. Okay. And I think people are fascinated by that. Yeah. And I think they're even fascinated. They're like, wow, like that's someone asked me a question, mm. you know? So that's kind of what I'm going for. But at the same time, like I'm going to have you on my show. I want to do our show in the Hamptons. Like I want the vibes, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, cause there's still legacy that these kids love. Right. They love seeing it and they're like, wow. And you, what you're targeting is so important because these kids have like 7 million followers. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it because they're not a household name. Like mm -hmm. if you said a lot of these people, people that I know and even younger people will be like, I don't know who that is. But if I ask my daughter, she's like, oh yeah, mom. Oh. That's, she's such a big deal. I'm like, okay. My son plays baseball. He's seven, right? And I interviewed this guy uh, who plays for the Savannah Bananas. It's mm -hmm. like this funny... You wouldn't know. I, you know, I'm yeah. just starting to get into it, but it's like a funny baseball team that does TikTok tricks in the middle of a baseball game. Oh, that's cute. But they do millions upon like the 10 million views on their videos. Isn't that incredible? I'm always like, who are these millions of people? I don't yeah. get it. But it's very interesting. Um, and, but it's funny because like my guests are totally different. Like I'm looking obviously for people that are misunderstood, but I'm looking to get like Lorena Bobbitt. Yeah. Where the, what happened to her? And because it's the after the so Me amazing, Too though. thing. I love that. I, but. Yeah. But it's like, because Me Too happened. Remember back then she was seen as such a crazy psycho who like just cut her husband's dick off. Right. Yeah. Now it would be like, talk, let's talk about domestic violence, how important, you know, that is. And what, what did you really go through without all the shaming? I mean, I want to know what happened. I will her. say I'm proud of you because we, we had this call before you were doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And this was something that you envisioned Yeah, and you stuck to your guns and you did it. And you're not in this for the views or the likes or anything like that. You're actually getting to the facts yeah. of, real people that have real stories and i think you know yes am i mis misunderstood i would say yes i mm -hmm. am um but i did things you know and i, and I have to own up to those things and it's yeah. not something that i could be like oh well it was a different time like yeah it was a different time but i still did them do you think that what you learned from doing the dirty.com is helping you now oh, with time. your new platform big time the the time it took me to build that site it took about five years to really get it off the ground. Mm -hmm. Fax has got off the ground in five months. Wow. So the, I'm seeing the speed of the internet and the speed of how people process things. Mm -hmm. It's a totally different monster. And not to give away too much of my secrets, mm -hmm. the people that I'm talking about, no one cares enough to write in the journalist, the journalist world, mm -hmm. the Wall Street journals, they're not writing about Alex Earl. They, right. they, they don't care. Well, you know why I care? I only found out about her because of my daughter. But what's interesting to me about her, do you know that her stepmother is Ashley Dupree? Yeah. I find that fascinating. I'm friends with her. I knew her before she was anything. I literally oh, was like... I'd love to have her on the show. I want to know how she got away with it, got out over the stigma, how she married this guy that has these beautiful children. They have children together Oh, you want now. Dupree on the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know Alex. She'll do it. Saying. Yeah. Um, I find them to be fascinating. Yeah. And so... Obviously, I don't care about the get ready with me stuff, um, but she's, Alex is incredible because she's created this platform for herself. So I guess people like me need to like get with the program a little bit. And talk I think, to I think it's, she, Alex was right time, right place. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that were just, their timing was perfect. Yeah. I and think, she's also a hot girl that people want to look at, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, she's a hot blonde. Yeah. Right. Um, I just know her. So it's like, I yeah, it's hard, I, it's hard to process yeah. like that, but like. I think with her, the timing was perfect and people were looking for some refreshing person to just be themselves. Yeah. Go out and have a good time. And and a lot of the older generation were like reliving their life through her. It's yeah. like literally you're watching a TV show of our lives back in the day. Yeah. But I think people in my generation really dismiss girls like that because they're like, oh my God, they're stupid. They don't know anything. Look at how they're making all this money and they don't know anything about hard work or getting a job or beefing up your resume or whatever. But they also forget what it was like to be 21, 22 right. and trying to figure out your life in the world and getting wasted. Right. You know, like, and now we look at it like, gosh, she drinks a lot. No, we drank a lot too. Right. That is know? very true. Not to defend her. Yeah. Do I think she drinks a lot? She probably does, but 
we drank a lot too yeah. at that age. And did a lot of stupid things. Massively stupid. More yeah. stupid than her because there was no cameras around. Exactly. And it just wasn't documented. Yeah. So, right. Um, okay. So are you chasing any interesting stories that you want to tell me about? Or see. how does it work? Like, are you reading all the stories all over the place? Like... Associated, Pre um, Associated Press or whatever would put out and then you you decide what's news and you make it bigger and you go yeah, after Yeah, I think, people. I think well, right now that's that's the, the play. The play yeah. is it's like, okay, what's the breaking story? What's the angle? Mm -hmm. And I, like, we had a story about um, the Theranos. Yeah, uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Holmes, yeah. right? Yeah, she went to jail, but how was her jail experience? Like, what has her jail experience been in mm. the first two days? She's having complete panic attacks. She's breaking down. Like, that's the stuff that we're kind of like. Kinda how like, do you get a source in there? What do you mean? You have people in there that are calling him? Are you talking about these prison guards? You know how much they make? Wow. Come okay. on. They don't make that much. So you have sources everywhere and uh, money's green. But at the same time, what I've done, and, I, and, I, and this is what I did learn from the other site, I'm cooler than the, my competition. Yeah. Like people are like, oh my God, I'm talking to Nick Ritchie. Yeah, right. You know, like, and they're you have older. some clout. Yeah. Clout, but also like they're not... When I talk to them, they're like, wow, like, and I'm like, hey, let's have a beer sometime or let's hang out, like, yeah. whatever. They always remember me forever. And I, I'm in their mind, almost their best friend. Yeah. Which I wish I could be everyone's best friend. But the reality is, is the story in itself, they feel like they're part of it. Yeah. Right? Oh, of course. And everyone wants to be a part of yeah. the story, which m reminds me, actually, I had someone on my show. Um, we're coming up in July, I think, on the 10 year anniversary of the Anthony Weiner scandal. And do you remember breaking that yeah. with uh, Sydney Leathers? Yeah. So she came on and she talked to me. About, she, how's she doing? She, she's she's great. Show? That's so she's crazy. great. And you can't, you'll have to watch the episode. It will come out like on the week of the anniversary. Yeah. Normally, you know, even though. I technically was a mistress too, right? I, I wouldn't necessarily interview people like that, but I found her story interesting because it was different than mine. She did expose someone. She wanted that notoriety. She did it again to another man after who was running for politics. Yeah, but she wasn't targeting. No, no, she wasn't targeting. But I think she felt wronged by like, he started to, uh, he was running for mayor. Yeah. And she was like, wait a minute, I'm having phone sex with this guy five times a day. He, well, you can't portray, portray the wholesome family image yeah and, and he had already been taken down a year before and pretended that he didn't have any more scandals so yeah. i get it anthony weiner is very interesting to me have you seen the documentary weiner yeah i'm on it, it oh you are yeah it's fantastic by it's the, the way. best document it's the best documentary i've ever seen because it was in the middle of the scandal yeah people should watch it if they haven't seen yeah. it because it's so great and he's actually really real huma abedin her reaction was the best Pr priceless ever, ever. by the way how did she just stand by him and not get pissed? She's like figuring out kind of how to... Because the cameras were there. Yeah, she knew. Well, She's Clinton. I mean, it was pretty crazy. But you do see at the beginning of it how smart he is and how good he was as a politician or as an actor, whatever it is. He he was very passionate about what he did. Yeah. Um, and also it, it, what made him really good at work was probably what made him really bad. We sold a lot a of person. Carlos Dangerous shirts. Oh my God. It was so good. I'm sure you did. But anyway, so for people that don't know, Sydney went to you to yeah. break the story and kept, she said she kept trying to reach you and tell you she had this I didn't information. Believe her. Yeah, about Anthony Weiner and you did not believe her. And finally, I guess she gave you um, some sort of facts. Like what happened? She gave, she gave me a pictures of his, you know, and, 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 but and it's shot. It was him? Well, no, because it was, <laughs> she, he was really good at not sh like cutting Showing out his face. face. Yeah. So Sydney sent me the pictures and then I had to go to the, to Google and find pictures off Facebook of him on a, a vacation with sandals on. Ah, so you could and match I matched, the torso. Well, no, I, I, I didn't even have that. I had to match the toes. So I matched the toes and I said, you know what, Sydney, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go for it. Wow. And then I did it. I played poker and we, yeah. and it was the biggest story in the world. Right. And what's interesting too is you kept her name out of it. And she said, she, she was like, he did exactly what he said. He kept my name out of it. But somewhere else they figured out who she was and yeah. exposed her. And it like, I mean, it destroyed her internally, but she ended up, you know, becoming a stripper from, she well, was not she a stripper no before. Yeah. She had no choice. She became a stripper. She did all these crazy things. And I think she even like, tried to get her labia redone and sell the she labia. She was on the money train. I mean, she was trying to make yes, money off of yeah, it. Yeah, right, right, right. So Because she didn't, like, who's going to hire her now, right? 
with a name like Sydney Leathers, which, by the way, is her birth name. Yeah. Um, so she, you know, she leaned into it. She lived it. And she's, you know, she's doing okay. She's fine. And she's owned it. And she's, like, not, you know, she doesn't live with any shame about it at all. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but I would love to get him on the show. Um, he, I would love to have him on my show. Yeah, he's an interesting dude. I uh, After this, we'll talk. I mean, I know his people. But I think he just, he does not want to relive it, you know. I think it'd be good for him too, like just to talk about it. Cause you know, the, the, so the Stormy Daniels stuff we broke on the dirty, mm -hmm. I was part of that whole $130,000 deal, but the computer, you broke it when it came out years later, even though you knew about it 10 years before well, or whatever? We, we broke it in 2014. Right. Okay. Before and, the election. And then the lawyer, the lawyer, um, it was a whole thing. Like Trump was trying to get it. It was, Michael Cohen was involved. Mm -hmm. This was this was when the election started. Yeah. And we pulled it and then I felt guilty and then I put it back up and it like it became a whole thing. But that doesn't that doesn't matter. The crazier part was during the election is that that Anthony shared the computer with his wife and that's how the FBI yeah. the whole FBI thing happened because of the porn or child porn, alleged child porn yeah. on the computer that had the Hillary emails because they shared the oh computer. Oh my God. Yeah, it was so crazy. So it all came back full circle. Wow. And my the 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 traffic and like all this stuff and my name was all over the media for the original story because it all led to the FBI investigation on Clinton. Yeah. And it literally ruined the election for her. Yeah. It was just a just a wild, crazy connection yeah. with that whole thing. That was yeah. nuts. Um, I, I also, you know, I lived in Vegas with, uh, at the time when Stormy Daniels was here and after the tiger stuff came out, she did come to me and said, I have a story. Yeah. Do you know someone that I can give this to? And she spoke to my contact at us weekly, I think. And they ended up saying, you know, he, he's the biggest star right now on yeah. the apprentice. We're not going to publish this. Yeah. And so I, you know, I didn't really think that much about it, but I believed her. There was nothing exciting about her story. You know, she wasn't, she just wanted to make a couple bucks at the time, but her story was true. And then the fact that she had her moment years later, it was like right place, right time. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, I mean, I think she's a fantastic girl, quite frankly, and I, she's going to come on my show in a couple months. So I think that'll be exciting to hear from her. No, she's great. I, I never talked to her directly, mm -hmm. but she wrote the whole thing out. Oh. And, it, and I don't know if it was an email or whatever, but I had like the play-by-play. -play, right. And then I posted it, and it was just gangbusters. Yeah, and I remember her being like, yeah, we, you know, Shark Week was on in the background, and like... You know, and it's I'm true. like, oh God, this is so boring. No one's going to publish this. But like, you know, she was having an affair, a one night stand or whatever with the president. So I thought, oh, maybe somebody will pay her fifty thousand dollars. And, and Melani was pregnant too at the time. I don't remember, but yeah, I'm. I'm that's crazy. Um, all right. So as I told you earlier, my notes for you fell in the pool, so I can't go off of them. What else have I forgotten um, to ask you? What should we talk about before you leave? Oh, I got some. Uh, this I don't know if it's. I should talk about it though. We can cut it out later. Do you um, do you know what's going on with that the whole scandal ball stuff? This yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not somebody who watched the show. Yeah. I have now started to watch the reunions because, you know, I feel oh, like I have on? to get into it. I, I, I me me too. I'm not like I I find it bizarre that everyone's in such an uproar about a cheating scandal since mine. Like no one's ever talked about it in yeah. such a way that it's on the front page of like it's relatable. The New York Times to you know Us Weekly, right? Yeah. So. I find it bizarre because there's so much anger at, well, the two of them, I guess, but at the fact that the cheating happened at all. But all those kids or whatever on the show were cheaters. Yeah. So I don't really get it. It's very incestual. Yeah. And I, and I, I feel very uncomfortable watching how mean, um, like on the reunion, uh, the whole group was to Tom and then started to be to Raquel when she comes out or whatever. I, I'm shocked that no one stopped people to be like, you're clearly triggered by something in your own life because this has nothing really to do with you and your level of anger is almost dangerous. Like yeah. I, I feel, I, I almost feel bad for them because, you know, I don't condone what they did, but I, I don't think it's right for people to be so nasty and be like, close down his restaurant. And I, I think that's nuts when everybody has skeletons in their closet. Yeah. Anyway. So who are you going to, who are you going to come out with saying that they're having a, no, a cause I, cause, <laughs> cause I'm, I was friends with Lala, mm -hmm. and then 
you know, they she broke up with Randall Emmett, mm. who's the fa- famous uh, movie producer. Yeah, and this Randall scandal thing came out. Yeah, and... I watched that. It, it it didn't really. Yeah, it, it wasn't been that. Good. It wasn't that good. Like it didn't really. I think they the the hype was bigger than yeah. When, for sure. So when I watched it, it didn't do anything for me. Yeah. Not to protect Randall because you know I I feel like I'm in the middle of something, but Lala blocked me. So now, not that I'm team Randall, but I talked to Randall. Yeah. I, you know, I've been in, in, in one of his films. Like, I, you know, we have a relationship. Yeah. So I, I just, you know, I'm trying to wrap my head around, like, what's the bigger deal? Yeah. Because it's not on surface. Yeah, like, I get it. He cheated, whatever. But I think I, I, think I know something that's probably going to hit the fan mm-hmm. that's going to blow this out the water. About Randall, you mean? I think... Because I asked Randall, I go, Randall, did you ever sleep with Raquel? Ooh. Because if Lala finds out, she's going to go berserk. I was just going to say. Because ha- Randall's, he's slept with a lot of people. I'm sure. But her producer. level of anger is like beyond anything I've seen. Well, they're, well, they're going through a custody battle, right? Uh-huh. So I, I think, you know, he's playing close to the chest and she's trying to find cards. So I don't know. But I asked him. He said I was crazy. Uh, but he didn't deny it, so. Um, wouldn't know. wouldn't that be interesting? Um, but yeah, I I feel like Lala's level of anger towards Raquel seems overly way over the it's top. It's crazy like to know, watch. I think Lala knows something, or up. has a feeling, yeah, yeah, and doesn't want to bring that up because then it it's too close to home. Yeah, because Raquel is not the brightest. Yeah, I could see it happening, and I and I know Randy's. You know, he's pretty good with the ladies. Yeah. So uh, I I don't know. The fact that he didn't deny because he he when I, when I ask him stuff, he denies it. Mm. He didn't deny it. Interesting. Which makes me feel like like that weird like butterfly. Right. In like my there stomach. might be something there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that would be a good one. I hope you get to the bottom of that. I really don't want to because yeah. the demo is too old. It doesn't yeah. really work. <laughs> right. Like everyone's going crazy, but mm. I don't know. I feel like. They're like us. We've only like watched parts of the reunion and yeah. we really don't know. Exactly. So, all right. Well, we'll see. But there's got to be another big scandal out there. Um, there's always big yeah, scandals. Yeah, yeah. Always. And they always revolve around cheating for the most part. They're, Those are the ones that people always, are most interested in. It's always the mistress getting burnt mm. that's coming and calling and saying like, hey, um, I was promised this. Didn't yeah. get that. And here I am. And this is what I got. Yeah. And then now it's different because mm. it's facts so i have to like fact check everything i have lawyers right there's a whole process now um because it is more journalistic yeah it's a little grown up mm-hmm. so speaking of which i i wonder your opinion on whether or not you find this interesting i on my bucket list like i told you about rudy giuliani was on it but a a, a person who i have always been fascinated with is v stiviano okay from the donald sterling scandal do you yeah. remember yeah and she disappeared after that whole scandal, never to be heard again. Where is she? Nobody knows. Oh, I She's know still because I've been talking to her on the phone. No way. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah, so I, I. She made two hundred fifty grand on that audio. Did she? Yeah. Nobody knows. From TMZ. TMZ. Okay. Well, I believe her stance is that she did not sell it or give it away, but she does have a very interesting story, which nah, I, I cannot money. tell yet, but from what she I know the me, lawyer involved, and mm-hmm. she made money. Yeah. Well, okay. As you know, it was, it's always interesting to me when a woman is taping someone or anyone is taping another per- person yeah. and then uses that against them because yeah. it's almost like they are baiting them to say something so they can use that tape against them in one way. Well, or you another. and I both know there's no such thing as a leak. Oh, right. That's not a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. But what I don't understand is she didn't have like the mistress code. Like, why not go to him and be like, give me $10 million for this as opposed to, so it doesn't get out, as opposed to let me give this to TMZ or whoever and make 250000 It I, seems like short-term thinking. I think that she probably did. And, and he, he said no. And he probably told her to go F herself. Right. And do you think he was smarter than everyone else knowing that he could sell this shitty team for a ton of money if no. he got out he of it? No. He didn't want to lose the team. He didn't. I think... For him, he was just senile, old. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those guys that just thinks he has so much power. Yeah. He could kill anything. Yeah. But that was an incredible story. They've come out with a podcast about it. And now, actually, uh, my friend just cast 
the whole cast for it, but they're coming out with a made for TV um, That's cool. show exactly like they did with Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. And I think that whole thing will come back and people that don't know about that scandal will now know about it. And I had Matt Barnes on who was on the um, Clippers during yeah. that whole scandal. So he was telling me about it. So it's, it's That's kind crazy. of fascinating yeah. to me. The Clippers still suck. So it doesn't, Do they? Matter. Okay, it doesn't well, matter. I don't know. I'm not a sports fanatic. Um, all right. Anything else I missed before? Uh, no. So, okay. So you're, you're going to take me on a date. Um, oh yes. You're coming to Palm beach. Or the other option for you is because I'm, I've never been to the Hamptons. Okay, so we can go to the Hamptons. We can go to 75 Main. Have you heard of it? Never We're, heard of it. Okay, so my friend owns 75 Main, super fun. Okay, and he has a great bar, restaurant, and a hotel there. And I'm gonna do the podcast from there, people watching, because he has everyone from like what's his name, Robert Kraft, uh -huh. people like that, that stop by, have coffee with him. So I think it'll be fantastic to see all the celebrities that just walk by and how they sit and talk to him and do nothing. But you, you know, should do your podcast out there. You can find a ton of dirt on people um, out there if that's what you're looking for. You can, you know, do. A well, I want to get you on my, on my show. Yeah, because I'm just, I, I just don't understand why. You're still in love with this guy. Oh, stuff. <laughs> you can ask me that on your, See? On your podcast. I can't do it on mine. <laughs> Why? Uh, because it's, I don't want to make mine about me so much like that. I know what I'm just Because my you. whole thing is I've had to live in the past for so long that I want to move forward. You, you know? just want to talk about everyone else. Yeah. Well, because so many people have talked about me for so long, you know? This is true. Yeah. And they're stuck on that one story with me, which makes it hard to get out of it you know anytime someone starts an interview with me that's what they bring you know up as you... part of my bio and i know that i have to just lean into it and be like okay no i don't think so i think you just find the next guy the next yeah who superstar. has to be bigger yeah yeah I'm trying to think who could we i did sort of date the gillette commercial because i did date Derek jeter and who was the third guy in the gillette commercial i'm sure i dated him <laughs> so at some point it's not but, but yeah but that's dating we need to find. Yeah, I got to get married to someone fantastic. We need someone to find fantastic. a good married man with five kids deep. What? Why does he have to be married? Oh, you need because me in a we, scandal? Yeah, we need a bigger scandal to kill the old scandal. That's well, how you yeah, kill a scandal. Yeah, but why does it have to be a scandal? I think that if I could find someone, land them, marry them, then they'll be like, oh, she's credible. She is, you know, and she you are landed. Well, I know that, but she landed this guy to marry her because as a mistress, people think, You'll always be a mistress. No one will really want you as their number one. I know what it's like to be someone's What's number longest, one. What? I know, tigers. You were the driver. So <laughs> so wait, what is the longest you've been in a relationship for? Oh, uh, like four or five years. Wow, that's long. Yeah. And you thought that was going to go. Yeah, I always, I'm always in it for marriage. I mean, I dated um, Brett Boone. Do you know Brett yeah, Boone, the yeah. baseball player? We dated for like four years. That's and it the wasn't biggest that... red flag, never date a baseball player. I, okay, well, that was a red flag. And the fact that he's al an alcoholic and had to breathe into a breathalyzer well, four times a day, That's that should have been a sign. So That's a baseball player, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely would say that I had a type for a long time. Now I've done enough work that I'm like, let me not have a type and just try to pick someone that, I'm not attracted to like such toxicity. Is that a word? Yeah. Um, but find somebody that is stable, but that I'm attracted to. I really want to be attracted to somebody. You can't be our age and be like bored anymore. Like yeah. I want to feel like I'm 25 and I want to fuck them and touch them all the time. And that's great. Um, but you don't want to wait five days. No. Five days. Yeah. No, I don't want to wait. I, I want to be at that point where I'm like aching for them. But that they know me and they love me and they're not going to just run off with some 25 year old because she's. 25. I mean, when you're when you're almost I'm 48, so I'm almost technically 50. You can't compete with 25 year olds. We're just it's just totally different. You're pretty close though. You but, can, you can compete. Thank you. But I can compete in the way that I've been I have so much life experience. I'm really fucking interesting and I'm really thrilling to be around. Like I will do anything. I have I'm so much fun to be around. And a lot of these girls, you know, models they suck cuz they're hungry, they don't want to smile, they you know, they yeah. you know, but you they look gorgeous. Yeah, but they don't even, they have no they don't even want to talk about anything. And they they have so much life experience too and they just don't want to absorb it. Yeah. It's so weird. I I think a good lesson for women is like if you if you don't worry so much about your appearance i mean obviously it's great to look good but like men at the end of the day will be with the funny girl they'll be not maybe uh to fuck the, them but I they'll marry the them sexiest thing is when a woman wears like a baseball cap yeah hair back yeah just 
getting coffee. I do too. It's like just the normal, the normal life. When they go over the top, like I'm going out to the club or whatever. Yeah. Because you just, you look at them like, geez, this is like not really who you are. Right. You know, you're just trying to sell yourself and you think you right. need to look a certain way to sell yourself. The most beautiful thing, at least for me, is when, like you said, like when a woman is just herself and this is who I am and she's confident in that. And that's, that's right. that. And she could be your personal porn star, but you can also get on the couch and watch Netflix with your kids with her and you're just as in love with her. I think that's the goal for you that we're going to find you yeah. at the Breakers in Palm Beach when you come visit me or in the Hamptons. I think Those that should be our sound goal. sound like very expensive women, but yes. No, but they're not. They're trying to find... Uh, they're trying to find the exit. They're, yeah, they're trying to find their exit yeah, strategy. Yeah, but I'm, trust me, I used to do this at Tao and all the places I worked, I know men and I know women. So we can find someone who will love you for you and not be a total gold digger that you're like obsessed with that doesn't have to look like a porn star. I love this matchmaking show that you have this podcast. Yeah. Matchmaking show. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so we, you've heard it here first. We're going to see if we can find Nick Ritchie. Dude. His next, do you ever want to get married again? Yeah. I want, okay. I, I would like, see if we can I find you your next I want, You know, if I have, I've, if I could have another kid before 50, I think that would be cool. Oh, but okay. it's not it's not mandatory. Well, you I can have a kid till you're in your 80s, as Robert De Niro just showed all of us, yeah, yeah. and Al Pacino. Yeah. So it's never too late for you. That's true. Yeah. Um, all right. So I guess we will continue this on your podcast. Yes, Facts Pod. Forgot anything? Can I plug that? Of at, course. At Facts Pod mm -hmm. is um, the Instagram and the TikTok. And we're on YouTube as well and subscribe and Spotify, all those fun things. Yep. And then we also have, I have another show that I co-host with Emily Wilson, who's blowing up right now. And she's a younger, Gen Z -er type. And that's called JTF, Just the Facts. But you can find both those shows at Facts Pod. And yeah, I cannot wait to have you on my show. So I can ask you some really good questions. Yeah, we'll save the hard hitting questions for me, I guess, because... um you know, whatever. You're good at that. You've been doing it longer than I have. Uh, yeah, it's not a good thing. I just look <laughs> at you and I just know I can feel it. Yeah. Well, um, all right. Well, I will see you soon and I can't wait for that. I'm excited to find love. Okay, good. And I'm, I'm going to bring it to you. Mark my words. I have a feeling. You really, you really think yeah. so? Yeah. I've actually introduced a couple people that have gotten married. So I do have it under my belt. Really? But like, I feel like I've had a, I may not know you personally for this long, but I feel like I've, a, I've had a history with you for so long. I get it. I get you. I get it. Okay. We're going to make this happen. You got to give me one chance that if I say you got to try this girl, will you at least go out with that? Ooh, that's tough because girls have done that before. And on face value, I would value, never do it. On face unless value, I it it's, was great. she's got to be like pretty, though. I'm not going to get you some troll. I know, but I've been watching that Jewish mat matchmaker show. Those girls are so ugly. But that's, you're not going to get a girl like that. No, she's going to look super hot. Okay. But she's going to actually be one of those girls that thinks she's like a fat girl in a hot girl's body. Do you know what I mean? I love those girls because they have. What? No, <laughs> I shouldn't have said it like that. That she's, you know, she's a little humble. She's not all about fucking any guy that talks to her. She's not going to leave you for a sugar daddy. You know, she has But she'll good... eat a mad pasta. Yeah. Where does it go? Uh, she probably takes laxatives. Oh I don't really God. know. No, we're going to figure it out for you, and, and it's going to be good. I'm excited. I can't wait. See, All right, thank you it. for joining me. Thank you for having me, always. Mm -hmm.